This is Voice Power Media. Welcome. This is Voice Power Media News. I am Daniel Nyongodem. Monkey Pulse gradually returning as Nigeria records 24 cases in seven days. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has reported 24 monkey pulse cases in seven days across 12 states with four casualties also recorded. The NCDC disclosed this in a statement on Monday evening as cases in Nigeria surpasses over 100 this year, according to the news agency of Nigeria. This makes it 157 positive infections of monkeypox confirmed between January 1st and July 31st. The NCDC revealed that of the 24 additional cases, Ondo State has five cases, while Lagos and Kano have three each. Abia, Adamawa, Bayosa, and Guara have two each, and Delta, Anambra, Gombe, Rivers, and Nasarawa, one each. It added that the casualties were recorded from Lagos, Delta, Ondo, and Akwaibom, stating that of the confirmed cases in Nigeria, 105 are males, while 152 are females. News agencies also confirmed News continues after this. The NCDC states, from September 2017 to July 31, 2020, a total of 12 deaths had been recorded in nine states, and they are Lagos 3, Edo 2, Imo 1, Cross River 1, the FCT 1, Rivers 1, Ondo 1, Delta 1, and Aquaibom State 1. Ex-Governor of Enugu State, Chimaroke Namani, says Peter Obi's presidential campaign is a mere propaganda and that he should be ignored. Chimaroke charged leaders and members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as well as the general public to ignore the campaign messages of the Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. This is coming at the back of barrage of social media messages by the Enugu State's former governor, aimed at dissuading the people from voting Mr. Peter Obi at the forthcoming general election in 2023. Namani, who described Obi's campaign as mere propaganda, charged every PDP leader to strictly monitor his constituents with a view to preventing them from falling prey to the campaigns of the LP. Namani warned against Greek gifts from the obedience. Canvassers, as that would negatively affect the PDP chances to produce state governors, senators, members of the House of Representatives, and State House of Assembly. The senator likened the obedient movement to the story of the tortoise that borrowed feather from other animals to enable it fly to attend a feast, only to appropriate what belongs to everyone to himself, claiming to be everybody. He said, that is exactly what they want, to borrow from everybody and then turn around to appropriate everything. Do not give them your feathers. Let them stay on the ground where they belong. Your feathers are the structures they need. Call their bluff. Our party and platform is PDP. We must stand firm. We must not be swayed by the obedience sentiments and vote Labour Party. If we blur the distinction, it will be difficult to reverse. Remember this obedience advocates and advocates are noisy, loud, intolerant, proselytizers, condescending, but less than 0.25 percent of over 200 million Nigerian population, at least Oshun State's 2,000 votes for the Labour Party bears it out. Nigeria loses 1.9 billion US dollars monthly to oil theft, while 400,000 barrels of oil stolen on a daily basis, says Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Press Silva. Nigeria loses about 1.9 billion US dollars monthly to the activities of oil vandals, with its attendant effect on environmental degradation. Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC Limited, Malam Mele Kwari, has said. This is even as the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Timmy Presiva, has said that the country loses 400,000 barrels of crude oil daily via oil theft. Kwari made the disclosure when a federal government delegation on anti oil theft, led by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timmy Presiva, visited Okowa on Monday at Government House. Asaba. As a country, we hardly meet our OPEC production quantum of 1.99 million barrels per day, with our current production level of 1.4 million barrels per day, which is currently being threatened by the activities of these economic saboteurs. This has done extensive damage to the environment and losing 1.9 billion US dollars every month 
is colossal considering the nature of the global economy at the moment. According to the news agency of Nigeria, Timmy Press Silva said this on Monday when he paid a courtesy visit to Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State at the government house already. He described the development as a national emergency. He regretted that the, na the nation had fallen short of OPEC daily quota from 1.8 million barrels to 1.4 million barrels due to crude theft. Why with the whole results of 365,564 candidates over alleged malpractices. 1.22 million obtained five credits, including maths, English. The West African Nation Nash Examinations Council, why on Monday in Lagos, released the results of this year's May-June West African Senior School Certificate Examination, WASE. A total of 1,600,000 and 1,047 candidates sat the examination, out of which 1,222,505 representing 76.36 obtained credits and above in at least five mandatory subjects, including English language and mathematics, which is a notable decrease of 5.34% from 81.7% of that of last year. Meanwhile, no fewer than 10 states out of the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, which are yet to pay for their candidates' exam fees in full, would have their candidates' results withheld until they pay the money, the money in full. And likewise, a total of 364,564 candidates, representing 22.83% of the total number of candidates who sat the examination, are being withheld in connection with various reported cases of exam practice. And their cases are being investigated to determine if to eventually release the result or cancel it. The head of the National Office of WIAC Nigeria, Mr. Patrick Aregon, announced the release of the results and gave the statistics at a media conference held at the headquarters of the organization in Yaba. He explained that the cost of conducting its both school-based and exams for private candidates has gone up astronomically and therefore would ensure to get its money paid in full by the indebted state government before releasing their candidates' results. He also decried the upsurge in malpractice cases during the exam, particularly over that of last year, blaming the development over many reasons. According to him, many students no longer prepare well for exams as they rely on the so-called ESPO, which is actually non-existent and also for activities of the rock website operators and some social media platform owners who post question papers online immediately after the commencement of subject papers and the use of mobile phones in the exam halls in spite of the ban placed on the device. He however promised that Y would continue to sanction all cases of exam malpractice and perpetrators, including schools and school administrators, invigilators and supervisors until the system is rid of sharp practices. Aregan, who also complained that the insecurity situation in the country, particularly in Kaduna State and some eastern states where the sit at home order is imposed, really taken a toll on the organization during the conduct of the exam, stressed that the council was able to get the support of state government and security agencies to help out. Aregan also noted that a total of 1,713 candidates with special needs, including visually impaired students, that's forming 128 and hearing impaired, 583 physically challenged, 12, and 387 others sat, others sat the exam, and that their results had been released with that of others. He, however, said activities could start checking their results. Yaiva said that candidates could start checking their results within the next 12 hours on the school's or council's website, wagdirect.org. Harrigan added that the certificates would be ready for collection within 90 days in candidates' various schools. Nobel laureate 
Professor Woleshow Inka has dissociated himself from a viral video suspe suspected to have been posted by a member of the National Association of Sea Dogs, popularly known as Pirates Confraternity, at a rally where members appeared to be mocking the health status of all progressives, Congress, APC presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Shoyinka, whose reaction was contained in a statement yesterday, described the video as dubious and bizarre. He said, My attention has been drawn to a video clip making rounds on the internet of a dancing and chanting group in red and white costume, purportedly members of the Pirates Confraternity. The display acidly targeted a presidential candidate in the awaited 2023 elections. Since the whole world knows of my connection with the confraternity, it is essential that I state in clear, unambiguous terms that I am not involved in that private performance, nor in any way associated with the sentiments expressed in the songs. Reacted to the attack, Reno Mokri, a former spokesman to Good Luck Jonathan, described Wole Shoinka as lacking the moral fiber to criticize the confraternity video, adding that Shoinka should have known the consequence before forming the group in the first place. PDP postpones NEC caucus meeting as Article Wiki Rift deepens. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has postponed its National Executive Committee NEC and National Caucus meeting following the protracted rift between its presidential candidate, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, and River State Governor, Inyesom Wiki. The meeting of the two critical organs were originally scheduled to hold tomorrow and Thursday. A statement by the PDP National Secretary, Senator Samuel Ayamu, said the postponement was due to unforeseen circumstances. He said new, new dates for these meetings would be announced in due course. Although the Secretary did not disclose the unforeseen circumstances that warranted the postponement, party sources said the decision was informed by a headline position taken by the River State Governor in the ongoing effort to reconcile him with Article. Among other demands, the Wiki camp has called on the national chairman of the party, Dr. Iocha Ayu, to step aside and allow one of its deputies from the South to take the office. The demand is being made in view of the fact that the PDP presidential candidate, the chairman of the Board of Trustees, and the national chairman are all from the north. He saw said the invitation extended to Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawolu by Wiki to commission projects in River State ruffled some feathers in the top party hierarchy of the PDP. According to the source, Wiki's decision to invite the Lagos State Governor, who is from the ruling all Progressives Congress APC party to commission projects in the PDP controlled state was meant to spite the party leadership. Wiki had on July 8 received three APC governors Governor Rotimi Akredolu of Ondo State, Kayode Fayemi of Ikiti State, and Sanwolu a few days ago after Atiku announced Delta State Governor Ifanyo Kawa as his running mate. PDP stakeholders are said to be uncomfortable with the latter day hobnobbing of the Rivers Governor with APC chieftains, especially close allies of the APC presidential candidate Asiwaju Bolatinobu. On cybersecurity, the Nigerian Communications Commission's Computer Security Incident Response Team has flagged a new malware hidden at which has inf infiltrated Google Play Store that can impact device performance and jeopardize users' privacy. NCC raises red flag on virus attack. The Nigerian Communications Commission's Computer Security Incidents Response Team has flagged a new malware hidden at, which has infiltrated Google Play Store that can impact device performance and jeopardize users' privacy. In its August 8 advisory, NCC classified the virus first identified by the 
McAfee mobile research team as high in probability and damage potential. The malware infiltrated the Google Play Store in the form of several device cleaners or optimization apps. The commission said, upon installation, it can run malicious services without the user opening the app. It also spams the user with irrelevant advertisements. The apps have received downloads ranging from 100,000 to over a million. El Rufai speaks on joining the PDP as party chieftain woos him. Cardinal State Governor Nasi El Rufai has shut down any possibility of joining the People's Democratic Party, PDP. El Rufai ruled out the possibility of dumping the All Progressives Congress APC for the PDP in a reaction shared via his Twitter account on Monday. Before then, the spokesperson for the Atiku Abubakar 2023 presidential campaign organization, Daniel Boala, had expressed optimism that El Rufai would dump the APC for the PDP ahead of the 2023 elections. Nasi El Rufai wrote, My attention was drawn to at El Rufai laughing at a comment made about me on my past video. Mm -hmm. At El Rufai is one of the finest we have from the north. I will never join issues with him, especially because I am optimistic he will be with us before the 2023 elections. But the Kaduna state governor quickly rejected the idea, saying not even his cops will be found near the PDP. He wrote, thanks, Adbola Daniel, but no, thanks again. Never, never, ever, not even my cops will be found in the vicinities of your newfound political party. I still they laugh. Erufai. Governors asked Buhari to take 33 steps to rescue Nigeria's economy. The governor were concerned about the deteriorating state of the economy and the ripple effect on the nation ahead of the 2023 general elections. Nigerian governors advised the presidential the advice President Muhammad Buhari led government to take some urgent steps as part of the coordinated efforts to instill fiscal discipline and prevent the nation from economic collapse. The governors made the proposal at a meeting with Mr. Buhari last month as premium times gathered. And the paper also reported that the governors advised the federal government to offer federal civil servants who are older than 50 years a one-off retirement package to exit the service. They equally urged the federal government to immediately put an end to the Central Bank of Nigeria's financing of the government's budgetary expenditures and convert its 19 trillion naira debt into a 100-year bond. The governors were concerned over the deteriorating state of the economy and the ripple effect on the nation ahead of the 2023 general elections. Earlier in the week, the Premium Times also analyzed the Nigeria's external reserves, revealing that the figures amount to only 15 billion US dollars, well below the 36 billion US dollars balance on the gross external reserves claimed by the central bank, with the nation spending 5.9 trillion naira on imports in the first quarter of the year. Reserves of 15 billion US dollars would barely cover four months of imports. Last week, Details emerged that the balance in Nigeria's excess crude oil account had depleted significantly from 35.37 million US dollars to Nigeria in deeper hole than in 2015. Sanusi hits Buhari's government. The deposed Emir of Kano and former Central Bank of Nigeria CBN governor Sanusi Lamido Sanusi has said Nigeria is in a deeper hole under President Muammar Buhari than it was in 2015. Sanusi spoke in Lagos late Thursday at the Akinjide Adyoshun Foundation, themed, Are Good Leaders Scarce in Nigeria? According to Sanusi, Nigeria is the only oil-producing country that is grieving at the moment when oil prices had gone up as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war. He said the nation's total revenue was not able to service its debts and that if anybody did not understand that, Nigeria is in a complete mess. We were in a deep hole in 2015. And between 2015 and now, 
we have been digging ourselves into a deeper hole, says Sanusi. Sanusi added that we thought we had a big problem in 2015. 2015 is nothing compared to what will happen in 2023. We have terrorism. We have banditry. We have inflation. We have unstable exchange rate. And the worst thing is that those in leadership actually think we are going to thank them when they leave office. That we are going to appreciate them. There is no, ex there is no change. There is no sense of urgency. If you are running a company that, if you are running a company and your sales revenue cannot pay interest, you know you are bankrupt. Oaneze frowns at Oaneze frowns at Buhari's statement on Southeast killings. Oaneze Ndibo has frowned against President Muhammad Buhari's statement, which was nuanced at the Southeast. as a haven for terrorists for terrorists that attack non-indigenous and law enforcement officials. Professor George Obiozo, President General of ONS Ndibu, also described as unfair the presidency statement, the president's statements implying that the insecurity persists because the leaders have not forcefully spoken. Professor Obiozo, who spoke through Chedozi Alex Obonia, National Publicity Secretary of Oane Zendibu, was reacting to various media publications where President Muhammad Buhari, in his release issued by his spokesman, Malam Garaba Shehu, condemned the recent attacks against non indigenous and law enforcement officials by terrorists in the Southeast, urging community and religious leaders to speak more forcefully against the killings stand up and defend the ethos of a cultural and religious heritage. heritage. Those who know should point at specific people who did this. Professor Obioza said, this is very unfair to the Igbos, especially when the presidency knows the root cause and the nature of the insecurity in the Southeast. It needs to be added that the solution to the insecurity in the Southeast lies in the enormous powers of the presidency. The above remarks of the president appears to have ignored the prolonged open war with the Boko Haram in the northeast, the, the banditry in the northwest, especially in Kasina State, the Fulani headsman invasion of several communities in the Middle Belt region, the church massacre at Owo, Owo the daily kidnappings on our highways, the Kaduna Abuja train abduction, among others. Buhari government told to immediately comply with the United Nations recommendation on Namdikanu. The Southeast Revival Group has urged the federal government of Nigeria to immediately comply with the resolutions of the United Nations. Resolutions of the United Nations Human Rights Council Working Group on arbitrary detention on the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. Mazin Namdekano to avert a fresh war front amid the current insecurity in most parts of the country. The United Nations recently indicated both the Nigerian and Kenyan governments for the United Nations recently indicted both the Nigerian government and the government of Kenya for the extraordinary rendition, torture and continued detention of Namdekano without due process. Consequently, the United Nations agreed and recommended to the federal government to immediately release Namdi Kano unconditionally. But however, in a statement signed by the president and national coordinator of the group, Chief Willy Ezugu, at the weekend, the group called on the government to be responsible and reasonable in handling the recommendations of the United Nations as part of the bitter pills Nigeria must take to reduce armed struggle in the country. The statement read in part, for the United Nations to, to ask for the federal government to pay adequate compensation for the arbitrary violation of human rights of Namdi Kanu, it then becomes clear that the world body has found grave infractions in the process of rendition and detention of the IPOB leader. We have come to the end of the news on Voice Power Media.